So let's see. Uh, tomorrow we're supposed to get the transcript of the co- phone call between President Trump and the new president, the then new president of Ukraine. Thursday we're supposed to get the acting director of national intelligence uh, before a House committee where, uh, if you believe Jed Babin, who was on our show earlier, he says uh, Admiral McGuire will not hand over the whistleblower report. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. Uh, the House Democrats are saying he has to. Nancy Pelosi says impeachment is now official. I keep thinking to myself, people that just sort of casually follow the news, and, and I mean, you probably don't because you're listening to this show right now, but uh, you have friends that just sort of, you know, check a headline on their phone every once in a while or, you know, they're sort of vaguely in touch with what's going on. Um, how, how would you even explain today to somebody who only casually follows the news? Because you'd say, well, Pelosi came out and said they're going to open uh, impeachment uh, against Trump. And that person would be like, um, haven't they been doing that for years? And that person would not be wrong. LaFon is, on the, is uh, on the radio with us right now, 210-599-5555 on KTSA. Hi, LaFon. Hi, Jack. How are you doing? Uh, let me check. I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, today was interesting. Um, I have a feeling that tomorrow when the transcript, which is going to be unredacted, comes out and they, everybody's got a chance to read it, that even though there's going to be stupid and stubborn and go ahead with impeachment, that the moderate Democrats who were not on board are going to try to peel off. I don't know if they're going to be They can't. Successful. They can't. This yeah. language is too... This is two brinksmanship stuff. They can't. They can't back away from this. They can't say never mind like Rosanna Banana. And and, and besides which, even when, the, when there was nothing in the Mueller report, people just insisted it was in there anyway. Lafon, I tell you, you, you're thinking if you look at it and there's nothing in there, there's nothing in there. People will see what they want to see. True, and so I think the people that are going to get hurt the most are the moderate Democrats who are going to be against GOP. Uh, People in those districts where Trump won big, I think that is going to help seal us returning. Let me ask you a question about that. I I understand what you're saying. So the theory you're putting forward is uh, this is enraging Trump voters. It's infuriating them. uh, And they are now more fired up than ever to come out and vote uh, next year. Except that I also remember hearing that argument after the Kavanaugh hearings. And it didn't happen. So are you sure it's going to happen in 2020? I think because this directly affects the president. Kavanaugh was close, but he was kind of an offshoot because this directly affects the mm. president himself. Yeah. I think people will have more of an impetus. And I hope whatever Republican candidates come out that they are good and strong and can convey a message and are not losers. All right, second all of that. LaFont, great call. Thank you. So LaFont says, look out because you're poking the bear, that being the uh, Trump voters. You're making them mad. They're, in, they're, already, they're already angry at CNN and Jim Acosta and fake news, and now, they, uh, now, that you're, now you're getting more angry. And if there's nothing in the transcript of that phone call, uh, how are you going to explain that? How are you going to justify what you've already committed to today? You know, we're talking about tomorrow, but you committed to it today. So you you just committed to buying the car. You've said I will buy. I, I'm signing. But tomorrow you're going to get the Carfax report, and Thursday you're going to take the test drive. But it but what does it matter? Because today you said I'm buying it. Sign me up. Um, the answer is that. These are politicians, and they're infinitely malleable. So remember with the Mueller report, most people did not read it. Most people let someone tell them what was in it. You may have even let me tell you what was in it. But most people didn't read it, so they got somebody's digest of it. And even after that happened, you had people insisting there were crimes in there and there were this in there and there's 12 impeachable offenses that are clearly laid out and you know this will be a mini Mueller report it will be much shorter 
I don't know how long this phone call was, but it's certainly not going to take 400 pages. And I can tell you right now, I don't know what's in it. I have no idea. But I can tell you right now, there'll be something in it for everyone. And I'm not sure that it, no matter how exculpatory it is, no matter how clean Trump looks in it, I, I'm not sure that it will matter at all to the people that have been on the warpath uh, to get him. You know, this is, this is an, uh, uh, an impeachment independent of facts. They were calling for his impeachment before he was sworn in. Now, how, how could he have done anything impeachable when he hadn't yet spent one minute as president? So facts don't matter, except if you can find a fact to sort of fold into what you're doing. Say, oh, well, here's another reason we're doing it. Look at this. But, but you don't need them. They haven't needed them. They've never needed them. And, you know, that's how we are about politicians. Um, it's not just Trump. There was this kind of, uh, you know, blind loyalty to Obama by some Democrats. There was this kind of blind loyalty... Uh, to uh, to Clinton by some Democrats. Republicans have had people like this where they're just blindly loyal. Um, but but in this case, it's not only loyalty; it's also they're they're kind of um, they're kind of obligated. They've amped up. See, this is the thing nobody ever talks about. Democrats have led their base, have led the people out there, the rank and file people who consider themselves Democrats. I always joke, you know, the guy with the Subaru that never scraped off his Gore Lieberman sticker, that guy, okay? They, they've led him to believe, or her to believe, we're going to get Trump. And so that person is like, good, when? Come on, when's it going to happen? I'm waiting, I'm hungry. And they've said it, and they've said it, and they've promised, and they've promised, and the Swalwells and the Schiffs have said, I have evidence, I'm going to produce it, wait till you see what we have. And they've never done it. So they have to keep going. There's no reverse. They can't back up. That's the only thing I disagree with about LaFon. There's no way, if you're a House Democrat, you can back off of impeachment. Your, your transmission does not have a reverse gear. You can only go forward. And by the way, l let's say just for the sake of argument, there really isn't anything in the phone call. Then we just wait for the next thing. <laughs> or we say, oh, the whistleblower has some other stuff. It wasn't just Ukraine. It was this country and that country. Trust me. There's more where that came from. How many countries are there in the world? How many conversations has Trump had with foreign leaders? We need to look at all of them.